Hello, everybody. Uh, no countdown today. It disappeared, and we had we didn't figure it out figure out how to get it back until you know we were ready to start. So uh, here we are. It's probably my fault. <laughs> well, okay. So Lindsay, I was here. so <laughs> impressed with how you like played a video clip last week. <laughs> That's probably like, why we don't have the countdown anymore. <laughs> But it, I mean, it worked. It was like technology was your friend. Yeah, Amazing. we're not BFFs, but it decided to be more friendly last yeah. week. Well, you it. like told it who's boss. <laughs> I failed at the countdown timer and now it's punishing us by not letting us have a countdown timer. So, oh, goodness, goodness. <laughs> Who really knows? Oh, yes. Cindy is here. Good morning, Hi, Cindy. Cindy. And Risa is here. Good morning. Hi. hi. Um, if you're watching, let us know where you're watching from and say hi in the comments. Um, and definitely ask questions. If you have questions, uh, let us know. We don't have, well, we usually don't have anything really prepared. Sometimes we'll be like, oh yeah, we should talk about this or that. We we don't have anything prepared today. So if you have a topic you want to discuss, definitely put it into the chat. Um, what do you have in your cup today, Lindsay? I have decaf black coffee. <laughs> Well, surprised. <laughs> I have uh, energized reds. Oh, that sounds delicious. Oh, God. So good. Such a fantastic drink. I love it when it's warm. Yes. Very soothing. The best warm. I mean, it's mm -hmm. good. I'm sure I'll drink it cold more in the summer. Um, I but... am sure that I won't. Yeah. Yeah. We'll I will always drink the drinks hot versus cold. Yes. Even, even water, you don't like to be ice cold. I mean, there are, there are moments when I'm like, yes, I need something cold to drink, but more often than not, I feel better drinking room temperature to hot water instead of just like yeah. flat out cold water. Yeah. And I've heard that that's good because our ancestors never had ice water unless they were in the Arctic or something. I feel like that <laughs> then I should probably drink colder water because I've got a lot of Nordic blood. <laughs> right. Well, and then Jeff likes to talk about doing an internal cold plunge. I just don't like it. I just don't. But you like keto chow cold, right? I will. Yeah. I mean, I have to think about it. I'm like, I really like it hot, but then yeah, it's yeah, it cold, so but I really like to turn it into like a, a steamer instead of mm -hmm. it being yep. always like ice cold. Um, I do prefer it to be just like from the fridge. Uh, cold versus turning it into like a slushy or not slushy, uh, a milkshake kind of, kind of coldness. So okay. there's but that. You like, you like it as ice cream, right? Yeah, I, I do like it as ice cream, but I also tend to need to drink something warm alongside it whenever I do have it. As <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, Tell me your high Charlotte maintenance without telling me your high maintenance. Yeah, right. <laughs> Charlotte is here and Nancy's here from Queens, New York. And Very Blaze fun. is here. Hi, Blaze. Uh, Yvonne is here from Tyler, Texas. I know um, where that is. <laughs> ooh, found uh, my first open honeysuckles yesterday. It's finally <gasps> spring. Oh. So wonderful. Okay, so our cherry tree is in bloom right now. Probably like peak beauty. Are you capturing um, all the, the little video clips of it? I haven't yet. I need to. I Yeah. I need to. Um. But I was remember, I was like, last year, I remember coming home from KetoCon yeah. and being happy that I didn't miss it because it just started. And I was like, it spring came so much more, so much earlier this year because that was at the end of April. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely felt like an early spring here. In fact, weather wise, just to like go off on, you know, that tangent, the past couple of days have been in insane here in in Ohio and I'm sure like all through Kentucky so and you know what what else West Virginia and in the Carolinas Tennessee like all those places had massive tornado um oh, gosh. issues and I don't know if y'all are familiar with uh Ryan Hall y'all but I was glued to his live stream yesterday mm -hmm. um fortunately we didn't get hit with anything other than torrential downpours <laughs> In fact, we've got um, some drainage rocks in our front yard that kind of help to funnel the water to the drain system. And um, you can usually, like even in heavy rain, you can usually see like the, the tops of the rocks with no issue. I couldn't see them at all. <laughs> it was 
banana sandwich wow. and we had rivers of water flowing through our yard in areas where it was you know low and i was just thinking my goodness it's coming <laughs> so yesterday it was 70 degrees and gorgeous what well, was like almost 70 here you know at certain points but <laughs> that just meant more opportunity for the for the tornadoes but yes i am jealous of the beauty weather weather yes it well, was... my, so I always um, can know when spring is early or late based on the lilacs because they often, if it's a pretty normal year, they'll come right at my birthday, which is April 28th. Mm -hmm. And they're about to bloom right now. And it's only April 3rd. So it's definitely early. And last year they were late. It was way after my birthday. So yeah. Yeah. How crazy. Um, Kel is here. Hello. Beth is here. Good morning. Uh, Risa is busy eating fried hard boiled eggs and bacon. That's yes. a good day. <laughs> sounds like a fantastic um, meal. Just finished Starbucks. Oh my goodness. It's like a beautiful day. Uh, Rickwin is here. Hello. Hayden is here. Um, <clears throat> Rickwin says we don't usually get honeysuckles until May, but we have violets in the grass blooming. Yes, I noticed that my little violets in the front are blooming. The um, wow. daffodils are almost done already, which is crazy. Oh, my tulips are blooming. Growing up, my grandparents had honeysuckle shrubs all mm. along their fence line, and it was the best time on the it, best time in the world. Whenever you could go and just like pluck honeysuckle after honeysuckle and just suck all of the honeysuckle nectar out of them, <sighs> those were the days. Yes, we that had a honeysuckle. Me now. <laughs> yeah, we have a had a honeysuckle at my house growing up too. And I remember, or maybe it was in a neighbor's house or something. I don't know. I just remember being so excited to taste it. <laughs> I know. When you're a kid and you can like find something in the wild that you're able to eat or whatever, it's like, it's yeah. so exciting. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The kids have been hunting for morel mushrooms. I uh, haven't found any yet, but hopefully at some point. Oh, high of 83 in Las Vegas. Nice. Sounds pretty cool for the desert. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hayden says it was 58 in Phoenix a couple days ago. We are hanging on to winter as long as possible. 58 sounds not bad. Yeah. Especially in Phoenix. Uh, yeah, but I feel like the, the Arizonians, they tend to they, they tend to prefer their their hot dry weather. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Trey Foos. There it is. Um, if you start selling your eggs, please let us know. Yeah, we um we sell them to friends locally, and the plan has always been to get a, a egg stand set up. And we're like, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. And then Jeff was um doing some research and found that the government is cracking down on small farms doing that kind of thing. And so now we're like, uh, I don't know about that. So that's on hold. <laughs> You really have to decide, is the red tape worth it? Yeah. And yeah. Sometimes it's just not. <laughs> it's hard. So, um, yeah. Okay. Cindy says that um, they had a tornado watch until 10 p.m. Those downpours and high winds, thankfully no damage. Oof. That That is a huge win. <laughs> yes. I uh, was sending a Marco Polo to my husband. I said, do you see this? Do you see how this rain is coming down? And he said, whoa, that's, yeah. that's intense. He said, I'm never going to get to cut the grass. <laughs> Jeff was saying that we had snow in the forecast at some point soon. I don't see it right now, but the weather's just been nuts. The weather has been absolutely crazy. Yes. Without a doubt. I don't know. I feel like we're probably not going to be having cold weather much longer. Yeah. It could be wrong, but that's just yeah. sort of what my, my gut tells me. I'm excited for an early spring. Um, Brenda says windy and rainy here in, what is that? Ocala? Ocala. Ocala. Cal uh, California. Florida. Oh, my brain. Ocala is kind of like uh, up the the coast of Florida, the the eastern coast of Florida, kind of midway up maybe, if, I, yeah. if I'm thinking um, of, of it right. Okay. Um, ex she's asking about coffee. Um, mm. I've heard coffee is bad and then coffee is good. <laughs> what gives? Oh man. We've heard that too. <laughs> if we had a dollar for everything that they say is bad and then say is good, I mean, we'd be pretty rich. 
Yeah. 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 Um, uh, what's your take on coffee, Lindsay? Is it good or bad? It has to be a black or white answer. It tastes amazing. Therefore, it's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I So I think individuality is important to take mm. into consideration. Uh, for sure. Not, not everything is good for every person. Not everything is bad for every person. And there are a lot of reasons to believe that coffee is really good for you. There's lots of different studies on different things about, you know, longevity and all different stuff, blood sugar, I believe all different stuff saying that coffee can be good for you. Yeah. But depending on where you're starting at, um, there are other reasons why it could be bad for you. So, you know, if you're struggling with adrenal stuff, um, I, I had been dealing with high heart rate and I found that coffee was raising my heart rate even more. And so I was like, I needed, that was bad for me at that moment. Um, so it really, it really depends on, I don't think there is a black or white answer of yes or no. It really depends. Well, and I also think that it, it boils down to like, what is your objective? Are you trying to drink coffee because of like antioxidant properties, but then you're also trying to avoid it because of excessive caffeine intake or, you know, adrenal stress and that kind of stuff. So it's like, which piece of the puzzle is more um, important to you in that moment. For me, I just enjoy the, the coffee all the time. And so I do tend to drink plenty of, or not plenty, but I tend to drink a lot of the coffee as decaf just to sort of reduce that caffeine intake. But, um, I think a lot of people who drink coffee that, or who say that coffee is bad, they may also be not considering the fact that a lot of people put stuff into coffee. Sure. Um, and then they kind of conflate like, okay, coffee is bad, but not realize like, oh, well, this is meaning like coffee with cream and sugar. Yeah. Or so, with all these pumps of syrup. syrup. <laughs> right. Right. So it's like, you have to really take the, take the time to parse out. Is this a single ingredient like coffee, drip coffee, or, you know, just brewed coffee or espresso that's nothing added kind of a thing, or is right. it doctored up in, you know, a fun, fanciful way? Um, yes. because I think that coffee is bad if you dump piles of sugar in it in order to make it palatable. Um, right. and <laughs> I think that, uh, you got to consider those variables. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Other variables to consider is, you know, organic versus not organic. And apparently sure. coffee sure. can have myotoxins, you know, mold. Um, so there's, and so if you're sensitive to that, then coffee could be bad because of that for you individually. Um, and so, like Lindsay said, you have to consider all of the different variables. Um, yeah. And for one person, that might not be a big deal. For another person, it's, you know, the difference between health and not health. <laughs> for so, sure. For sure. Yeah. Definitely that. Jared just <laughs> actually got back from Costa Rica recently, and he bought some Costa Rican coffee. Ooh, so nice. we're, we're getting to experience that. <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So my friend, um, who lives, she's my neighbor. Um, and we've, you know, started exercising together and stuff and she has her own coffee roaster oh, and she gave so me a fun. bag of freshly roasted coffee. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. I, I think that we tend to, you know, like pick something up off the, off the shelf, you know, dip, you know, based on whatever it is that we, we believe we like. Um, but the idea of getting freshly roasted coffee is so foreign. Um, mm -hmm. I know we have a Kofi, a Kofi roster. <laughs> How about a coffee roaster <laughs> company here in my town, but they tend to be more wholesale kind of a focus. Yeah. So you yeah. have to buy a lot of coffee in order for it to like, even let you order things. So yeah. there's that also did Thomas DeLauer, did you see that he put out a video recently about like the longest living people on the planet? I saw a video, I don't know, a month or two ago. I remember you telling me about, and I watched that one. Is that the same one or is this more recent? No, this one just came out like a day or two, maybe three days ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, basically, people in Costa Rica live the longest. Oh, and it's got to be the coffee. <laughs> All things considered, like yeah. good coffee, purpose in life. They still Lots eat things like black beans, eat tons of black beans, which I would struggle eating a lot of black beans. Um, but they tend to just... They tend to eat heavy breakfast or large breakfast, moderate mm -hmm. lunch, light dinner. 
but then they also have mm -hmm, they have a lot of you know purpose-driven activity so um anyway i just thought it was great that (laughs) my husband just got back from costa rica and he was like man it was so great there i you know can't wait to take you there someday i'm like i'm in (laughs) yeah well isn't that where paul saladino moved to to you know live his best life so checks out someday we might retire down there who knows Sounds awesome. So that's probably not real. We'll probably just retire to a boat and just sail the world. Well, you can do that in Costa Rica. We sure could. He did get to go fishing. Um, he saw some really awesome things, but never actually caught anything. But okay. It was a really great experience. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Beth says favorite favorite spring flower is lily of the valley. Pretty. Oh my gosh, spring is so great. Um. Yvonne says in Germany, they're called Maybells. Interesting. Oh, okay. So did you see the Keto Chow April Fool's video? I asked Chris directly, what was that? (laughs) I didn't say it in that phrase, like that terminology, but I was like, so did y'all have your April joke, April Fool's joke, like pre-sorted or... Did it happen after we kind of fleshed to all the things out? And he said, actually, that was such and such from creative team. He just came up with it. And I'm like, that means you probably I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> <laughs> so for anyone that um, is unaware, we on a live stream, what, like a month or two months ago? We, I feel like it was probably a month ago. Yeah. That sounds right. We were talking about a keto board game and how amazing it would be. And we were having all these ideas about what, you know, what you would do in this board game. Well, Keto Chow comes out with their April Fool's video, and it's an ad for a keto board game called Keto Quest. So, I mean, I really feel like we should get some royalties from all the money they're making on this. Well, not only that, but like Quest is like my word. I choose to use the word quest over journey always. Every time I'm like, it's a quest because it's it's a battle. It's not just a stroll in the park and you don't know where you're gonna end up. You don't know what you're going to face. It's a, it's a quest and it feels so much more active and powerful. And there they go using the word yep. quest yep. in the name. And the, it just, I have a lot of feelings. Of our ideas. It's kind of like whenever we said that the Ninja Creamy needed to be in Keto Chow colors. Oh, and they yeah. were like, you remember that? And they were like, oh yeah, yeah. QVC, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so then I also t- told Chris, so what I understand that you're not saying, but you're kind of saying, is that me and Neely get to be on the creative team henceforth and forevermore. Yeah. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're idea people. We are fantastic at ideas. We have zero skills in execution, but we can ideate all the time. Exactly. <laughs> um, okay. So speaking of Keto Chow, <laughs> Beth is thinking of trying Keto Chow and asking what we recommend, um, the variety pack or dot, dot, dot. Okay. Um, I think... I think the starter kit is a great choice. It is. It really is. Can you, I can't shift away from the screen without going dark. Oh yeah. Um, but, um, the starter kit, there's a couple of different options with the starter kit. Like there's the essentials starter kit, which only has like, maybe was it six flavors? And then there is the, um, uh, I can't remember the next name or the other one, but there's a larger variety on the starter kit, but, Seriously, yeah. the starter kit is the best way to go, in my opinion, just because you get to try a broad variety of their core line. Not core. That's the wrong word. They're, right. they're main. They're always in stock yeah. line. Um, and going with that and finding the flavors that you love the most, chocolate is always a winner. Okay. Always, so you always. can do a custom starter kit now. That's where right. you get remember to that. your own flavors. Um, and then you can do the essential starter kit that looks like it has six, maybe. Yeah. And then the premium starter kit has the one. maybe nine. And then the elite starter kit has 15. Yeah. And if you've never ordered from keto chow, I believe you can get those at a real cheap discount. Um, it, when you go so on to an expensive page, to start, they oh yeah 56 percent off on the um start oh the essentials starter kit and i want to say it winds up being what like 29 dollars after tax or 29 dollars yeah. before taxes um is that what it is i know you don't get it if like you've ever placed an order with keto chow before 
the essentials kit is not going to be the absolute rock bottom price. So right. Um, right. if you've never made a purchase before, then it, yeah. You can is, get it $19.99 if you've never ordered from Keto Chow before. Uh, and you also get the shaker bottle. Yeah. And you get a free $5 credit on there for your next order too. Yeah. That's awesome. It's a great way to try it out. It's a great low risk. I'm sorry. I'm watching the comments a little bit. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, we got to do it every time. We sure do. I'm not oh, and Chris says you're making so much money it. from that April Fool's joke. I knew it. I knew it too. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay. We're just shaking our finger at you, Chris Bear. <laughs> like it's one of these. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> coffee good, fire bad, but you need fire to make coffee. So I don't know. As long as fire represents heat. <laughs> exactly. I mean, electricity is fire. That's valid. It's true. It's all very true. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> Um, Hayden told us that it's the video is, is officially like logging our, um, oh no, not that one. I'm so much worse at this than you are. Uh, <laughs> we do uh, have validation. Yes. It is 100% yes. our idea first. 100%. There's no denying it. You know what? Like we've already discussed. We are not executors, so they just we had the idea, they executed that's the way it should be because Lord knows we're not gonna do it. I've got so many other things on my plate that are like necessary. <laughs> uh, okay, so these, Hayden, these people uh, in the house they chirp for food, and I have to make sure that they've got access to the day. food, it's a lot every single day. They want food again. Oh. multiple times multiple times per day it's not good enough no to just like feed them once and then move on with our lives no seriously they're constantly chirping yes all right coffee is bad coming from an avid british tea drinker listen you are welcome to have all the tea as long as i can yes. have all the coffee exactly <laughs> see we can live out. in harmony <laughs> if we were all the same there wouldn't be enough coffee <laughs> especially uh, not Ron's, whenever i get my hands you know, on it Ron's Keto Cafe is here. Hello. How's it going, Ron? Uh, Ron says, um, I drink three cups of coffee a day, only broke it off once. It's a good idea to do to, you know, stop every once in a while just to, you know, confirm to yourself that it's either, you know, good or bad or whatever. Um, I, it, yeah, I went off coffee, uh, you know, recently. I've done it many times, but yeah. recently I did for three months and I kept thinking, no, because people will say your energy will get better. Like once you get off of it and are really detox, then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I have so much more energy. I sleep so much better. That did not happen for me at all. <laughs> and so I'm like, but it's good to know that because otherwise I'd, you know, have in the back of my mind, if I just give up this coffee, then X, Y, Z would happen. But now I've confirmed to myself that actually that's not necessarily true for me. It could be true for right. someone else. Right. So, well, and, and you don't know until you try it. That's it. It's valid and fair, but also like, I find that I am so much more like relaxed when I drink coffee. Mm. See, some um, people don't find that. Some people find it makes their, them more anxious and stuff. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. That's the individuality. That's right. Yeah. I do think I am a fast metabolizer. Um, sure. You know, cause you, and you can't get that tested in some DNA tests and stuff, which I've not done, but my, cause it costs that I'm a fast metabolizer because it's never affected my sleep negatively. I mean, unless I like have some right before bed, um, then it might, but I just don't do that. Um, mm -hmm. but drinking it earlier in the day, I sleep great <laughs> when I'm drinking coffee. So I'm like, yeah, it's just not me. Might be someone else. Not me. Yeah. that That's also me. I, I tend to. I tend to be more just like capable of, of not being bounced off the walls like crazy whenever I've got a sufficient yeah. volume of coffee. Well, it, it is interesting that people that struggle with ADD mm -hmm. find coffee to be more uh, relaxing rather than stimulating. 
Right, right. Stimulants having the opposite effect and all that jazz. Yeah, it's fascinating. But I'm sure there's also other studies that would show, well, that's because you're just in flat out adrenal fatigue. So it doesn't matter what you do. You're just going to feel like Bleh. Exactly. Exactly. You can never win. <laughs> Um, Hayden says that the starter packs are a good way to start at the beginning. Yeah. And you get the shaker bottle, which is yeah. great to have. So definitely, especially because it's so cheap. It's like, take advantage of the opportunity to be a brand new customer and get that deal. That's Why right. Not? Um, uh, Rick Wins says, uh, yes, a cuppa can be good sometimes, but Americans seem to be stuck on coffee. It is true. I mean, it's not only Americans. I mean, think of, I mean, coffee is all over the world. But yes, Americans do love I'm coffee. sure South Americans, they're also pretty into the coffee since they grow it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, I mean, espresso in Italy, like coffee is, coffee is a worldwide thing. It, yes. It is amazing Universal. how um, how bad of coffee Americans settle for, though. Yeah. That, that's concerning. Gas station coffee and such. You know, it, it or like fast food restaurant coffee. Um, yes. You know, you also think like some diners, like we don't eat out very often, but having to eat out whenever you're traveling and stuff like that, you try to pick like an actual sit down restaurant instead of just like a drive through spot. And you think, okay, a little mom and pop spot, maybe they'll have good coffee. I can't tell you the number of places we've been where it's like, okay, they, we expect them to have good coffee. And it was just like brown water. Yes. <laughs> oh, I've, I've experienced that. It's so disappointing too. You're like, you put half the amount of ground that were necessary for this to become coffee. <laughs> yes. Oh, and then it's the worst when they bring out those little cups of like coffee mate. You're like, can I have some cream? And they they bring this like, oh, it's very sad. Well, we just... So <laughs> we just we just don't do that. <laughs> well, so I understand why like people make fun of Americans and their coffee if they're talking about that for sure. <laughs> so I'm from Oregon, close to Portland, and Portland knows how to do coffee. So oh yeah, there's that. Oh yeah, I mean, I remember whenever we were there, living there, like you couldn't go two tenths of a mile before running into a little shack with a yeah. coffee a drive through. And the yes. line like snaking through a parking lot for, yes. you know, a quarter mile. It was amazing. Every single one of them, they all know how to do coffee and they know yeah. that the competition is stiff. So they had better yeah. be making good coffee. Yeah. And somehow they're still in business. They're all still in business. Yeah. I So <laughs> there have been multiple people that I've known personally that have started coffee roasting companies <laughs> like locally. <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> So many people in Portland. Yeah. Like, yeah. Coffee is the, the way to get rich. Coffee is the bright commodity to choose. We're going to just oh, dig great. in and uh, <laughs> rake over, or rake yeah. in those profits. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's addictive. I mean, let's be honest. So that's always good for your, <laughs> if your commodity is addictive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Chris needs to work on that with keto chow. I mean, I guess it's addictive, but I don't know what specifically add caffeine, add something a little bit more addictive, profits would go. See, ideas, ideas. I I feel like there's there's some negatives to adding caffeine to, to things. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yes. Eesh. Because there's like people take caffeine pills on purpose. Yes. For things. And it's like you can really uh, you can really get yourself into a pickle if you uh, get a little too far gone on, on some of those things. Pickles is another thing that Portlanders are good at. Artisan pickles. <laughs> We've got all the good stuff here. Probably sourdough, oh. kombucha. Oh, so much kombucha here. So much kombucha. It's fantastic. Yeah, artisan kombucha. Artisanal. Exactly. Uh, let's see. This feels. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Brenda says, thank you uh, for the coffee answer. I only use heavy whipping cream and stevia for one cup. I mean, if it's working for you, that's oh. amazing. Seriously. Yeah. I, I mean, even at just a single cup of coffee, I would argue that that's a negligible amount for the typical person to become a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So like reasons I've looked into, you know, not having coffee for my own health is 
tannins in coffee can help they can hinder the absorption of some things so mm. i mean you, if you're having certain issues you might think about having coffee at a different time of the day or cutting it out completely like there's different reasons and they don't affect everybody like uh so they can uh, the tannins can hinder iron absorption mm. so if you're struggling with iron deficiency it would make sense to you know think about coffee that way if you're mm -hmm. struggling with hemochromatosis where you have way too much then maybe That's coffee helpful. will be a huge benefit to you. So yeah. you got to know where you're starting from. There's not a blanket. It's not like high fructose corn syrup where you're just like, that's bad for blanket everybody. Blanket statement, not hydrogenated good. Oil, hydrogenated oils. Bad for everybody. Not we good. can just say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, Charlotte went on a coffee tour in Costa Rica. That sounds amazing. Right. Definitely on the on the list of to to go experience. So oh, speaking of tours, I just confirmed with Redmond Real Salt that when we are in Utah, we're gonna get to do a salt mine tour. Woohoo! So um I've confirmed it, you know, for our family and hopefully Lindsay and her family will be there in time and it'll all work out for us all to go together. Uh, that hasn't yeah. been 100% confirmed yet, but um, at least our family will be doing that. So, and I'm planning on vlogging the trip. So Experience. definitely gonna be sharing that. It's gonna be so cool. It is my sincerious, 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 like seri serious and sincere <laughs> mixed up together. That is um, my most word. sincere desire that we are able to make yeah. it there in time. Um, and it is my most sincere desire that all of the Murphy clan will be able to make our <laughs> trek to Utah together. <laughs> yes, that will be We're amazing. working diligently on that. Yes, for anyone that hasn't heard, uh, we will be going to Utah for the Keto Chow meetup. Uh, <laughs> uh, September, September, oh my gosh. May 17th. I was thinking 17th and I just said the month that started with that. Okay. told you my brain's not braining. Um, anyways, May 17th, uh, if you're going to be in or around the Utah Salt Lake City area, uh, definitely come. We'd love to meet you. Please. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So Hayden says, uh, Americans think Lipton tea. Lipton is tea. Yeah. So same, but, yeah. same as the coffee thing we were talking about. Americans probably do tea badly too. I don't <laughs> so, think that I don't think probably is is the the right qualifier there. I think we definitely do pretty definitely. badly. <laughs> yes, so it's understandable. I mean, yeah. So we went to Scotland, and um, one of the people we were traveling with, she drank tea in Scotland every single day. Was obsessed with it. Came back stateside, tried drinking tea, and she was like, "This is not tea. This is I don't know what this is, but that's not it." And I'm all done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So my husband doesn't like coffee, never right. has. And when he More was a kid, you. yeah, exactly. When he was a kid, um, they were, he was at a restaurant with his family and his dad had like dark black coffee and it sat and got cold and his brother um, dared him to like take a big spoonful of it. And of course he did. And then from then on, he's like, never. And you're like, you can't judge coffee on that, like cold diner coffee when you're a kid. It's just not fair, but it right. ruined it for him forever. Does he like the smell of the coffee grounds on their own? Like just to smell the whiff of coffee? Is that pleasant to him? He's never said so. I don't understand how it couldn't be, but he has never admitted as far as I remember that he likes it. My oldest, she loves to smell the coffee grounds, but she's yes. like, I would never taste that. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. My dad has never so has drunk coffee either. And he has, he says he likes the smell, but he just mm -hmm. doesn't like the taste. Yeah. It's great. It's good stuff. Yeah. Um, let's see. <laughs> Gotta get caught up on the comments. Ooh. So many comments. Finally got a Ninja Creamy. Oh. That is awesome. And it's perfect timing to because to have it through the summer, it's the best way to go. I, I have to use it a lot recently, but I know I will as soon as summer comes around. I need to actually go replenish our creamies in our freezer. I, I think I have, what, seven total containers. Mm -hmm. I'm not as cool as Chris Bear with having, you know, 8,000. Who is, though? 
Um, but seven containers, I need to refill, replen, get a few different yes. flavors going. That yes, way well, I'm, I'm annoyed because I have some prepped in the freezer that I can't have right now. Because of because the I'm, dairy. Because I'm off the dairy. I did not that mean is, to thumbs up that. I need a thumbs down for that one. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully I'll be released to have some dairy again and then I can have my keto chow ice cream. I have made some of the core with coconut milk, but it's not the same. It's just not. Valid. Much valid. Um, speaking of being released to consume dairy, are things going well with with your program? With um, well, it's and... kind of been. I we I missed last week because last week was the day that I went to the doctor and then ended up doing all kinds of tests to find out if I was dying uh, for the rest of the day. And so that was the day I was supposed to have my call. And so trying to get all that figured out. Right. I'm having a call today with Jonathan after all of that. And we're going to, I feel like we we're starting from scratch. Yeah. You no. Know, Cause like he had me on some macros and I, like, I was so hungry and I was like, I can't. <laughs> and then come to find out there's a reason why I'm so hungry. And so like, we're going to have to talk about the macros Next. and like, what's, and then, so it's kind of annoying because it's like, I want to make these changes and see how I feel. But right. like I'm on a medication. I'm like, that's supposed to be changed. Like my appetite should be changing. Like it should be going down. So like, I can't just, so it's kind of frustrating to not be able to make those connections. Yeah. Uh, but he's going to help me just like nutritionally get through this and then go from there. So anyways, I feel like we started with a certain intention and then things got all mixed up and now we're having to kind of figure it out again. So there you go. <laughs> We're going to give two thumbs down to that. Exactly. Oh. Club. <laughs> That's awesome. I haven't seen that one before. <laughs> I learned that one on a, uh, a group video chat, maybe, I don't know, two weeks ago or so. And I was like, well, that's an adventure. I'm going to pull that mm -hmm. one out someday. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> well, so are you still going to attempt the 10K that you've been training towards? I oh, don't think so. I'm not thumbs upping that. <laughs> I don't think so. It's three weeks away and right. I haven't been able to train. Like I barely started training when all of this went down. And then my doctor was like, you need to keep your heart rate down until this is under control. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I don't, I don't think it would be a good idea for me to yeah. push my body to do that right now. Maybe like after I get through this, then I might mm -hmm. look towards something like that. But the, the yeah, it's just not ideal. Sure. Are you still able to do any kind of workout? Because you were talking about your neighbor working out yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, now that I'm on the medication, um, things are starting to normalize. They're not normal yet, but they're starting sure. to. And my doctor just said that I can exercise just to try to keep my heart rate under uh, 150. Mm. So, and that, you know, I do have to take it a little easy on some things, but like last night yeah. I went to exercise class and we did like a Pilates, Matt Pilates type class. Pilates and I was able to do so that good. Well. Yeah. yeah. I just had to a couple of times, like, you know, take a breath and let my heart rate come down. So yeah. Sure. Sure. Gotta do what you gotta do to keep yourself. Well, at least yeah. you're still moving forward. Yeah, I am. And like, I'm just excited to, to get active again. Cause this last week, well, I mean, she told me to keep my heart rate down. My husband was really concerned. He, you know, he, he like sent the kid to the store with me to push the cart. So I didn't, you know, all the things. And I was like, He's like, I need you in my life. Yeah. I need you alive. Please don't jeopardize that. <laughs> exactly. So I, I was taking it really easy. And then now I've been on the medication for a few days and, you know, that's helping. And so mm -hmm. just taking it one day at a time here. Yeah. And that's all any of us can really do. Right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, Chris Bear is doing fruity cereal ninja creamy. That sounds mm. good. That sounds good. Yeah. So um thankfully they sent out the samples for us influencers of the fruity cereal like way early. Sometimes it's like right before the flavor is released, but we got it a little early. Yeah. So I was able to taste it before I went dairy free. So if anyone was worried that I went off of my dairy, you know, <laughs> to taste Your it. Dairy I, did. 
I did. Although I have accidentally had dairy um, a couple of times. Like I went with my husband to get bunless burgers. It was after my ultrasound. So I'm like, like to find out if I had cancer and I'm dying. And then we went out to lunch afterwards and I got a bunless burger and it wasn't until I was completely finished eating it that I was like, that had cheese on it. <laughs> yeah. My brain obviously I, was not on dairy and diet diet choices at that moment. <laughs> Yeah. And I also like not to be an excuse maker or an enabler or anything, but I think it's pretty reasonable that your brain was preoccupied with other things at that time. I think that's really a, a reasonable situation. Oh, goodness. A well, reasonable and, I mistake. Die, and I had it and I was fine. So there's that. Yeah, you didn't die. So hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing I'm like, I've, you know, been off dairy for about three weeks and it's like, am I really going to know if I feel any better or not with all of the other stuff I have going on? It's like, <laughs> well, and it's so hard to pinpoint which variable is the greatest impact on how you feel. There's yeah. always 1800 different, different variables to consider. Is it the time of day that I'm eating it? Is it the, the food that I'm consuming? Is it the coffee? Is it the lack of coffee? Is it you know, dairy. Is it not dairy? Am I having too much protein? Is it not enough fat? Is it, you know, is it some not, lifestyle not, thing that has absolutely nothing to do with food? Right. Am I just stressed out because it's a stressful season of life and there's so many yes. things to do and no time to do it? Or, you know, am I constantly running children to and fro and, and just barely able to, to think about sleep? <laughs> yeah. So, oh, it's so tricky. well, and then the other thing that I've been frustrated about is how, symptoms just can be the same for different conditions. So like when I, you know, first started having the heart stuff, I was like, it's obviously iron deficiency. My iron, my ferritin just dropped. It is low. I had mm -hmm. the same uh, symptoms back when it was low before, like mm -hmm. it made a hundred percent sense that that's yeah. what it was. And like, you know, I, I, so on my video where I shared about my health stuff, I got so many kind comments. Like it was overwhelming how many kind comments I got. There's always going to be that like half a percent of people that want to be snarky and stuff. And that's fine. Like that's just normal. <laughs> but overwhelmingly, like it was, it was so kind. And so I'm very thankful for that. So anybody that, you know, left comments, I, I, I'm so grateful. Yeah. Um, uh, there were a few that were like, you know, you should have gone to the doctor sooner. Um, like, and so, and I'm like, well, first of all, it takes three weeks to get into my doctor. Cause she's very busy. Yeah. Second of all, if I had gone in right at the beginning and said, I'm having these heart rate things, my ferritin just dropped again. Like, I don't, maybe she would have found something different or had, but it's like, how many people go to the doctor and get correctly diagnosed on the, the first, first time? Try? <laughs> like, yeah. So I get it. I get it. We should go to our doctors. Um, but I like, in my opinion, if I had gone early on and didn't have those thyroid tests, mm -hmm. uh, like I can't see it really going a whole lot differently. Maybe it's possible, but you know, I'm strongly inclined to agree with you on that. I think that whenever you've got <clears throat> symptom A, B and C, and you go research that you're like, well, it could just be that I got a splinter. But right. it also could be cancer. Right. Well, <laughs> so, and then, <laughs> yes. Well, and if you look on Dr. Google, it will definitely be cancer. And you're definitely Google. dying tomorrow. Oh <laughs> but God. then also we're like, we we want to go with the most obvious, like the most likely. And so yeah. when I, I get the symptoms that I've had before, when I had this ferritin test and my ferritin's back to, you know, close to that level. Yeah. That's the most obvious answer. So it's like, I don't, um, I'm annoyed that I didn't catch it sooner, but at the same time, I'm like, that was, that just made sense. So it didn't make sense to look for all kinds of other things when that made total sense. And that's frustrating yeah. when these symptoms are so similar across different. Well, and then they could have been connected too. like the, the low ferritin could have been making the heart stuff worse. Like, Anyways. <laughs> oh, for sure. And it's possible that it was a chain reaction. When I was yes. in college, we had to take an aviation safety course because I did an aviation major. Um, and one of the things that they would talk about in accidents 
when you're going through trying to assess like what happened here, there's like this, this Swiss cheese theory or a link, a, a break in the chain kind of a theory to where if this one thing in the chain broke, then the accident would not have happened. But not just that one chain, but if that chain was still connected or that link was still connected, but this link over here was broken, then it wouldn't have happened. But if this link over here right before wouldn't have happened, then the whole thing would not have happened. So it's like, you know, if you just take one tiny piece out, things might have been different. You just never know exactly which chain link is the one that gets um, that that things hinge upon. Yes, yes. Um, Hayden is awaiting my pickle coffee and egg stand. Yes. Could you imagine pickle flavored coffee eggs? <laughs> uh, have you seen? Um, <laughs> There was a video that went viral before Easter of a guy making a recipe for uh jello tuna salad. Uh it was like an old, you know, one of those old recipes that is just completely disgusting. Like the Midwest style jello salads. Yeah. yeah, so it was like lime jello with tuna and mayonnaise. And like it was horrible. That was that was beautiful. So, anyways, pickle coffee eggs egg salad. <laughs> Sounds similar. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> well, and he put it into like this lamb mold, like when you make lamb cakes. If you see those, <laughs> too. <laughs> so he put the whole, the Jello into a lamb mold. It was so gross. I can't. So, nope. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard no for me. Thanks. <laughs> uh, um. Let's. See. See, Terry says, uh, love your bread recipes. Thanks to you. I made my first loaf. That is awesome. Um, live in nice. the UK. That is so cool. I love it when, <laughs> when it works out. <laughs> and I, I probably, yay, I probably hear more from people that it doesn't work out from because, you know, you the don't really do unless you have a problem. And so I do get, you know, and egg whites are notoriously difficult to predict. And so people can get all kinds of random results. So to hear that it worked, I'm so happy. Absolutely. <clears throat> Ooh, Rick one's doing kombucha. Uh, latest batch of kombucha is in the fridge after two day fermentation for several days. That's awesome. I, I made um, kombucha for a while back in the day. It was back before my husband liked it. So he oh. thought it was like, Oh, it's like drinking vinegar. It's so gross. And you You're know, like it's like delicious it. vinegar. And then he is now obsessed with it. It's his favorite thing. And I'm like, well, you should have liked it back when I was making it. Right. I <laughs> so love he wants to get into making it now. I loved doing kombucha. That was one of my like my favorite ferments that I did. Yes. Um, okay, so Chris says the salt mine tour is news to him. Yeah, I haven't told you yet. I just got the confirmation that yeah and do it. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sincere. That's going to be our new word. Sincerely. Sincerely, y'all. <laughs> we that might need to write that down. There's a title. Yeah. Wait, we should have a podcast called <laughs> Sincerely, y'all. <laughs> oh, bad tea drinker here. Yeah, same. Same. <clears throat> 18 creamy containers. That is practically 8,000, Chris. Yes. I wasn't far off. <laughs> yes. That's creamy boss level. <laughs> I do think that uh, they have to have them, though. It's more of a, a business requirement. Like, it's, a, it's necessary for development to discern, does this flavor creamy or does it not? Yeah. I Has feel like fish chum might business? not creamy. Oh, um, that's true. I could be wrong. Um, you are behind. I have a seven in one creamy with 18 containers and a creamy deluxe with 14 containers. I love my creamies and I need to buy stock in keto chow. Seriously. hundred <laughs> percent. Well, you know what? If it was publicly if, traded. We'd probably also have stock. Yeah. I mean, it's a good reason to become an influencer is the keto oh, chow sure. benefits. So recommended. That's my life hack for you. 
but the benefit isn't just like being able to taste test the new flavors and and you know share them the benefit is that you get to be bffs with chris and miriam exactly and then you get to go visit them in utah that's in right <laughs> uh, okay um andy says uh, latest creamy obsession is chocolate malt, and I'm almost out of those. Oh, I know. Oh, I have, no. I still have a stash of malt, which obviously I can't have right now, but I have a stash because it is, I think it's my favorite flavor. Really? So. That is awesome. I mean, it's hard to compare apples and oranges. It, but yeah. 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 I, I really like it. My, my two favorites still, still hold strong, hold steady at chocolate core and blueberry pie. Yeah, it's good stuff. I, I can't unlove them. Mm. That's just the way it is. <laughs> There's nothing they can do about it either. Um, Blaze says that she's made creamies with core and tallow. I haven't done it with the tallow yet. I, I want to try it. I did it with coconut milk and that definitely made it really creamy. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the difference between heavy whipping cream and butter. Yeah. But um, it was really good with the coconut milk, but I do want to try it with the tallow too. Mm. Yes. It was like bed rest. It's like, no, I have to do something. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, oh, Reese has got to go to work. Um, Ran Can Cook is here from Salem, Oregon. Neighbor. <clears throat> um, let's see. Corey says, sending good vibes from Winnipeg. Awesome. Um, let's see. I'm so glad that you're responsible for all the comments because trying to manage the comments last time, I was just like, her. I know it, is, it can be a little bit overwhelming because I don't do well with reading and talking at the same time. Oh, same. <laughs> trying to think about reading the comments and like, listen to you or like, <laughs> it doesn't work. I will, when I'm reading things, I will automatically try to inflect the way that I think the, the statement should be inflected um, or, mm -hmm. like, you know, trying to, to read with some level of emotion. And there are moments when I'm like, I'm reading it super excited. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that was a downer. That was not the right way to read that statement at all. Or uh, reverse, read it as a negative. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, positive. And you're like, oh, hmm. Maybe I should just like read it as just like normal and then talk about it after the fact. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. Jello tuna salad must have been a hard times meal. <laughs> that would be hard times on top of hard times. <laughs> I just think that you would do better to just do the tuna on its own with the mayonnaise and then just do the jello oh, on its own. Keep it and, separate, people. Uh, yeah. There's a reason why they they created the divided plate. There's a reason for that. Some not things should not touch. Care. Like eggs and pickles and coffee. Yeah. Although eggs with like pickles to turn it into a deviled egg. Totally, yeah, that's, that's totally down, down with yeah. that. Yeah. But it is, it is amazing what things go together and what things don't. Like yeah. some things that go together, magic. So like peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter and chocolate, you know, bacon and eggs, like bacon and chocolate. magical and then other things it's just like horrific and it's a combination because each thing on their own great yeah together horrific right um Pickles, dust coffee and eggs solo or individually they're all all delicious. perfect yes uh we're on the wrong side that's because Lindsay showed up before i did today whoever shows up first gets to be on that side <laughs> I very rarely can show up first, but I was, I snuck in there and I was like, I, I win. <laughs> you did win. Um, 18 equals 8,000. True statement. Always, always. Always and forever. Ooh, Rand Can Cook is going to be at the meetup in Utah. Awesome. Very cool. Do not wait. Uh -huh. Not even Miriam owns stock in Keto Chow. I knew that. I knew that. I do feel like it is advantageous or beneficial to Keto Chow as an entity to not go public. But if it did, yeah. I'd scoop up what I could. Of course, I probably couldn't afford any of it, but there we go. <laughs> um, 
Oh, Dustin has seven containers for his Ninja Creamy, but no room in the freezer. Yep, same. I find that is definitely the issue. We have, you know, a freezer that's got cow in it. And so as we eat down, I'm like, ooh, we're getting to the point where we could add a couple creamies. And then I get nervous, like, how many creamies high can you stack in, in one shelf before, mm. you know, it topples over? If it toppled over inside there and you didn't notice it until you opened, that would be bad that news. Would be so bad. Don't do that. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I've seen the Vulgar Chef online, and the, it's not... It's not something I want to ever watch. Never. Giant mayo gummy bear. That's disgusting. I have questions, sir. I don't. I have, questions. I have no questions. I want to know no more about it. <laughs> I don't want to know how you're doing it. I want to know if, the, if your state of mental <laughs> being is okay. No, definitely not. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Here. Yes. <laughs> but see, you have the power to do that too. So <laughs> see, I gave Lindsay power a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made her a co-host on the whole thing. So now she has full control and power and it's honestly terrifying. It gets confetti. <laughs> uh, oh no, but oh, I've got to go back to my chat. <laughs> Hey, listen, Chris Bear is accurate on this one right here. A splinter could come to equal cancer. I mean, that's Dr. Google for you. You just. And, I mean, they could have some of the same symptoms, obviously. Pain. Inflammation. Yeah. Cancer. Thornet or sores that will not heal. Wound not healing properly. Yeah. Cancer. I mean, it's, Always. it's possible. Possible. Always cancer. Oh, that's. I see there's great things about the internet and then there's not so great things about the internet. Sometimes I wish, you know, I just didn't have to know anything or try to figure anything out. And I could just go to my doctor and everything that they told me to do made me healthy. And that's it. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also I'd rather just be healthy and not have to go to a, a doctor. Right. You know, doctors are for the sick, not for the well. Right. Well, preventative medicine is a thing. Yeah. 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 But it's amazing how much preventive, preventative medicine you can do with diet and exercise and lifestyle. Yeah. Lemon and coffee. That doesn't sound good. I don't understand the premise. <laughs> yeah, I thought I people claimed that coffee was acidic. So why would we add more acid to the coffee? I don't know. I, I want to know where this came from. Yeah. <clears throat> Mayo on the jello, Amber. That that's so gross. Yeah, I remember like half of a canned pear and mayo and maybe jello as part. I don't know, but that was a thing, and that is makes me sad. So I know when you are baking a cake like a boxed cake from the store, pre-keto type of situations, you can substitute the oil and egg with mayo in order to create that cake. Like it's possible. Yes. Um, and it's more likely to be palatable because of the fact that you're not seeing the mayonnaise in the cake. And I love mayo. Like that is probably my number one condiment of all time. But also, like, I'm not eating it in jello. Like, I'm not going to make a keto jello where I use, you know, some monk fruit to sweeten it and some flavor oils and some mayo. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No. Although now that I oh. have the idea, I might do it. Did you see Dustin tried to do something? What was it, Dustin, that you did with mayo? Oh, you tried to make a, was it a pudding? Did you see that? No. Oh. That was pretty gross because it all like separated and it was all oh. oily. It was really oh. bad. It's really bad. <laughs> oh, Suzanne's going to be at the meet, meet up too. Yay. Yay. <clears throat> okay. Maybe it was a Southern thing. He was from Oklahoma. Yeah. Nope. Nope. That's not a Southern thing. That's a Midwest thing. They put uh -huh. jello in everything and they put everything in jello. Right. So I, I think I'd look further back on the family tree. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. oh yeah. I tried to make the pudding with the mayo and keto chow. Yeah, that was a waste of keto <gasps> chow. <gasps> we need a moment of silence for that that serving a keto chow. RIP. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I remember wacky cake. Did you ever make wacky cake with mayo? Mm -mm. Yeah. Is that the kind where it's just like two ingredients and all of a sudden it turns out? I don't remember. I think it was just wacky because it had mayo in it. Oh, I don't remember. I can, I can remember reading about things that are considered like wacky X, Y, Z, just because it was like, you know, like great depression type recipes where it would turn right. out with like, not, not your typical ingredients. Um, but yeah, I have not tried wacky cake uh -oh. and given the fact that I don't eat the sugar flour things anymore, I highly doubt that I will attempt it at any point. You can try a keto wacky cake. I'll have to go research that one. <laughs> Great. You're on the YouTubes. <laughs> the jello thing is out of control in Utah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lots of potlucks. Lots of jello. No, I it's funeral potatoes. potatoes. Those are the bee's knees. The what? Funeral potatoes? Funeral potatoes oh, are the yeah. bee's knees. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tend to like casseroles. Casseroles kind of get a bad rap. They do get a bad rap. I love um, them. Like, oh, it's so weird. But a lot of casseroles can be great. And it's like all those. in one dish. You just scoop, you serve, and you move on with your life. What? I love it. So good. Um. All right. Well, we are an hour in. What? What is this? Yes, oh, I remember that. Yeah, and Frisky's in the jello. <laughs> kind of so crunchy. <laughs> um, Classic um, cinema right there. Yeah. Um, Portillo's. Chocolate cake. Oh, okay. And had mayo. See, that, that makes more sense to me, to put mayo in a cake, because it's just oil. And eggs. Like, is I don't know if it's really better than just using oil and eggs. But it makes sense that it would work in that. I think the value add all is above that, it on something is like no. Yeah, I think the value add is that you have like you can buy store bought mayonnaise and it's shelf stable until you open it. Yes. So it's like you could have that as part of you know your like back stock or yeah. your you know like backup food source or supply, and you can still do things with those, yeah. um, like make a cake or use it in place of if you just don't happen to have chickens with fresh eggs coming out your ears. Uh, like some people. <laughs> like some people. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. All right. Well, that's enough mayo talk for today. Everybody go try some Seriously. yellow mayo molds. <laughs> I feel like uh, so bad. it's mellow molds now because it's made with <laughs> Mayo, mallow oh, molds. We're getting weird. Okay, it's time to go, people. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. And yes. uh, 